Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about um, the last uh, tool that we will be using in the measure phase of Six Sigma processes. Uh, remember, we talked about process capability, uh, Sigma process control operations, and we talked about X chart, R chart, P chart, C chart. Those were all about uh, trying to see whether from the processes, from our actual data, whether we do have a Cisco process, uh, Cisco, whether we do have a process that's under Cisco process control, right? Or in the process capability analysis, we looked at to see whether the baseline is actually conforming to the design specifications uh, because we provided the upper specification limit and lower specification limit. And we ran the analysis to assess CP, PP, CPK, PPK. Uh, those are the values that we looked at. Uh, in addition to that, we looked at the process uh, sigma level um, and we tried to decide whether um, we do have a capable process. Well, what happens if you would like to also test out your measurement system, system as well? Well, let's take a look at this data set. So in this data set, we do have three different operators, operator A, B, and C. We do have um, 10 different parts. And what we do is we make these operators go measure these 10 different parts three times um, for each one, right? So operator A does measure 10 different parts uh, three times, B does three times, and C does three times. And we record those measurement system, systems here. So what are we trying to test here? Well, we are trying to see if we have any source of variation due to the operator type, due to the part type, and due to the measurement system itself. We call it gauge. Well, uh, and the whole analysis is called gauge RNR. Um, it is very, very popular in the industry uh, because it tells us um, three, actually four different pieces of information on variation. It can even tell us whether there is any um, interaction, significant inter interaction between the operator and the part type. Um, and that's causing us the, the variation. Um, there are different types of gauge RNR study, uh, but the most common one is cross gauge, gauge RNR. Um, and we use it if um, an operator can measure multiple parts. If that's not the case, if for example, each part can be measured by only one operator, then we use the nested. Uh, gauge RNR, but most commonly used version is the cross gauge RNR. Well, what happens if you have multiple other factors? Um, in addition to operator and in addition to part type, let's assume there's another factor. Let's say we do all these measurements in different factories, for example, or different facilities, uh, whether it is maybe a service industry or a service company. Then in, th in that case, we use the expanded gauge RNR on Minitab. Um, I think we can use up to eight different factors in Minitab and Minitab can tell you the variation or sources of the variations, uh, whether those are significant or not significant in the expanded version. Well, we limit our attention in this video to the cross gauge RNR, all right. Uh, so what we do here is we go to our mini tab. Um, I already copied this information and pasted them on mini tab. Um, where to locate gauge RNR study? So you go to stat, um, and then look at quality tools. Here we do have gauge study. As I said, you do have cross nested expanded version. We looked at the cross version. Um, what happens here is I. Um, did this before, so I will just delete the selections. Um, for the part numbers, well, it is basically telling us um, our different product um, numbers. Where do we keep them? We just keep them here on the second column, the part section. Our operator information is kept on the first column. The measurement data, um, the response variable, whatever we measure, it doesn't matter, it can be height and weight, um, time, uh, it can be money, whatever you measure, uh, we will store it here 
on, on the column four. There are multiple options here. Well, actually two options, X bar and R option and an O option. I always select ANOVA because it also gives me X bar and R chart as well. So, and I will hit okay. It does bring up lots of different information. The first information is to look at is the two-way ANOVA table. I am not expecting to expecting you to like make sense of all these different information, but the only information that you should be careful of watching is this p-value and this two-way ANOVA table. And what it tells us is the following. Um, it tells us that you know, p-values, uh, all these three are smaller than 0.05. Mm -hmm. That's our level of significance here. And they indicate that the sources of variations that are coming from these three, like part operative and part operator interaction, those are all significant. We have to pay attention. Um, in other words, um, the source of variation that's coming due to using different parts in our measurement system is significant, so it's significant. Um, different operator types um, is, is significant. And part and interaction between part and operators are is also the significant in this variation analysis. So let's zig down further. Um, this second table is actually recording the variant components. Um, and on the, the second column, you see the percentage contribution of um, source of variations due to different uh, components um, uh, with respect to total error that we get across the, from this study. Um, the total gauge RNR, repeatable then reproduce, reproducibility, um, is accounted for 3.6% uh, of the total contribution to the total variance, versus part to part is occupying 96.4% of the total variation. So majority of our um, variation um, comes from having different parts, okay? This might be considered as a good thing because of all the different parts, um, there's nothing that much, you know, um, uh, variance uh, uh, impact of our measurement system and uh, our operators. You might just wanna um, say it at the very first place. But remember, another table told us that our part operator, part and operator interaction, those are, statistically significant when it comes to creating variances in our measurement systems, right? Okay, so, um, and then you can see the multiple different components of um, total gauge R and R, uh, which is 3.6%, right? The total repeatability uh, variation is 1%, 1.02%, and then reproducibility is 2.58% and reproducibility boils down to two parts. One is operator, different operators. The other one is operator and uh, part interaction. Uh, I will come to gauge evaluation later because this table is the most important thing to look at in this table is to the, the, the last column and then the first observation where it says that what percent of the study variation can be um, can be referred to the, the, the gauge measurement system and it says that 18.97%. Well, let's go ahead and explain this. How do I know whether I do have a good measurement system? Well, number one thing is to look at this number of distinct categories. So um, there is a certain standard put in place. As long as this number is greater than five, greater than or equal to five, we can definitely take a look at this number, which is 18.97 to see whether we do have an acceptable measurement system or not. Uh, well, where do I get that information from? I got that from Minitab's uh, help page. So I use a section on measurement systems. Basically says that according to, um, I believe this is automobile, um, manufacturers association. Uh, I don't remember the exact open, um, a version of this acronym. According to these guidelines, if your measurement system variation is less than 10%, well, what do we have? We do have 18.97%. 
and uh, then it is acceptable um, to avoid your process variation compare the total gauge RNR contribution in the percent study where war column percent tolerance percent process in your output table then look at this table all right what does this table say if this number is less than 10 percent then the measurement system acceptable don't worry about it if this number in our case is 18 point something percent and it is between 10 percent and 30 percent the measurement system is acceptable depending on the application, the cost of the measurement device, cost of repair or other factors. Long story short, this says that if it is really, really important for you, uh, your measurement system, um, then depending on the cost of changing that device or repairing that measurement device that you use, um, you might stick to it uh, in its current format or you might just do something about it depending on your application. Well, if it is too, 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 really, really, really important, just change it and maybe repair it or maybe take a look at it. Well, if this number is greater than 30%, then your measurement system cannot be accepted or can, should not be used um, and then do something about it. All right, um, let's keep looking at what um, Minitab gives us. Well, the rest is just great pictures visual representations of those um, variant components. As we can see, most of them are coming from having different parts. Let me increase the size of this picture. Enlarging it. Okay, so most of the variants that I have in my measurement system comes due to using different parts here. And I can see it here. As you can see from parts one to 10, I do get different um, measured data. Right, so as you can see, those are like you know, different, uh, you know, numbers. Um, and the measurement by operator, if you look at the box plot chart, uh, my ANOVA told me that the operator is also giving me a significant um, variance in my measurement systems. And you can literally see it here too, right? So their medians are not uh, equal or identical or similar. Uh, different operators are measuring, uh, the, the parts differently by using uh, the same uh, gauge. Um, and then part and operator interaction is also significantly creating different variations. You can see it all also here. So different colors and the shapes uh, refer to different operators here. And then on the x-axis, you have the part numbers. You see that um, the interaction is also different. Right. You don't really need to worry about this X and R chart here. Um, so these visuals uh, on the right and this um, bar chart that represents components of variation are the most important ones. All right, in a nutshell, what we can say about gauge R and R, it tells us uh, the source of variation in our operations, including our measurement system, our parts, and our operators. If you had one more category here, you could have also incorporated it by using um, other gauge RNR uh, study under um, quality tools. You go to gauge study, you can click on expanded version, right? We use the cross version because uh, in our case, um, different operators can measure different same parts, right? Um, if that's not the case, then you go to the nested uh, gauge RNR study, right? If only different operators can measure different parts, then it is the nested gauge RNR study. How do I know whether I do have an acceptable measurement system? Well, I look at this person study variance and look at the total gauge RNR contribution to it. I see that it is between 10% and 30%. Well, depending on my uh, business model, depending on what I do with this, I can change it or I can just leave it as it is, um, just basically depending on the cost of it, time to repair for it, right? A um, bunch of other factors. But if it is greater than 30%, then this cannot be trusted, right? So you should be doing something about with your gauge measurement system. That's about it. Thank you for your uh, attention.